And now, a recap from a series of moments from the old online trivia days. Today's episode, Hail the Hunter, the gimmick goes to hell. Welcome, Mike. Hey. Uh, this, been, this is the first time uh, we do a moment uh, recap. But first, what do we always have to do? Buy our shit. Buy our shit. You know what? It's not somber enough for this show. I am put that in black. <laughs> Can I do black? Yeah. Yeah. Good shit. Uh, we just ended yesterday our season finale with a mini series of eight shorts about Hail the Hunter. Yes. And we have questions. So we decided to make this little recap show uh, with somebody who was actually invested during the creation of the storyline. A recently upgraded pirate bitch, I believe he's a captain now. Yes, he's captain now. How you doing, sir? I'm doing great. Uh, I remember when you were like, hey, I found this clip. And I'm like, oh yeah, there's like seven more of them. And you're like, what? <laughs> and I was like, this is a whole thing. This was the story of the first season that no one remembers because we jettisoned that shit right away um, after the first season. But yeah, I, I was like, this will be a fun conversation. Uh, yes, that's kind of the thing. When yeah. I first found it, I decided I was going to do one episode. And then I, things just kept on popping up. And it was kind of like a mystery thing because I had to look for the pieces. <laughs> like some, some things were linked, some things you gave to me. And then even some things were exclusive to Facebook. It was, it's a weird combination of things. But I do believe uh, it was a successful show for us, not so much for you guys. Yeah. yeah. So uh, uh, we, got, we have a few questions that we yeah, want to okay. address here. And that put you in the hot seat for oh, a bit. Okay, okay. okay. First thing okay. first. Why okay. Ryan Hunter Hermes? Okay, so um, first of all, it's important to establish that this was Kane McMillan's idea. Uh, I just executed it. Uh, I did help craft the idea after he gave me the nugget, uh, and we built it out. But this started because in season one, there was a round one tournament match where I played Ryan Hermes in, in the tournament, um, and me, being uber douche heel that I was, uh, was playing sick that day. And like I was actually sick, and I was like, "Hunter, uh, Ryan drugged me uh, all, the entire match." It was just a like, gimmick that I threw out there for one match, just to like be like whatever. And Kane was very much like, "We should write storylines and do storylines for the show." And I was like, "That sounds like fun. We'll do it." Um, and so he had the idea of making Ryan a heel, uh, okay. and having the entire season revolve around this sort of corruption of the people that are typically the faces from the league that we shall not name. A lot of the continuity and like expectations of where these characters come from, come from where like, you know, shitty place uh, and, and just kind of carried over here. So it doesn't quite make sense if you're starting from episode one of Multiplex, so. But I meant more the fact like, mm. he's not good. Yeah, he's not good. Uh, it wasn't necessarily about acting ability, it was more so Kane going, Yeah, that's a good gimmick, we should run with it. It's really just it. It wasn't a chosen acting thing. Okay. Fair enough. Question two. The code. What the fuck is up with the code? Mm. Okay, so Kane wanted to do this thing where it was a, like, Winter Soldier brainwashing code thing to make... The, that way we, right, that way we can, like, have the room to have them go back to being faces at the end of the storyline if they wanted to. Um, and so, um, Kane and I sat down, we were like, what are code, like, what are phrases that would go into a Winter Soldier-like code for us? And like, Kane's nickname during that was the Juggernaut, so we put that in, we had Hunter in there, we had Golden Belts, um, I think we put Dragon in because of House Night Fury, because we had no other things. It was literally, there was literally only House Night Fury, Alpha Alliance, and then Cody started the Fellowship at the end of the season. So there weren't that many factions when we started. Um, but it was just, yeah, it was um, just kind of a bunch of 
phrases and words that related to trivia at that point. I believe we have lost my co-host. Oh no. Mike Hanley's internet died and sadly never came back. God damn Minnesota's internet service. Well, my co-host had some internet issues, but we will continue. Okay. Because we owe it to you, the fans. The people. The people. The third question. Mm -hmm. Chance the Titan out. It seems pretty obvious to me that he just got drafted to the Schmodown mm -hmm. and he left all the fan leagues. Fan leagues. I hate that term. I hate uh, other than that, you decided to put it in the storyline. So I assume this was kind of your explanation for it? Yeah. So the ex we, we tried to make an explanation for why Chance was gone in storyline, like in universe. And the answer was just kind of easy enough to be like, yeah, well, Ryan didn't want him. So he made him quit and go away. And like, we just never. And at that point, like, it was really hard to do a really immersive fictional storyline with what we were with our like league especially with like a lot of the shows not necessarily connecting and just running like warzone was just trying to run let alone do storylines uh and fandom was like kind of we were running well so we were like we're doing the storylines and like we forced tv and fandom tv to put nuggets in um so it was just kind of like fandom had this explanation for why he was gone in storyline and warzone was like nah he just went to the spread out and we we're like okay <laughs> like it kind of ruins the immersion but at the end of the day it was a stupid idea that was in fact weird yeah. One thing that was not made clear, though, was he seemed to be doing it against his will. Yeah. But he didn't seem to be under the influence of the code. So he was being blackmailed? That yeah. Yeah, the, the implication was that he was blackmailed into leaving uh, the league. Is there a specific reason you guys thought for the blackmail or just no? I think... I think maybe Kane had a specific reason or a specific idea in his mind. I don't really know what it would have been. I just, in my mind, was like, oh, yeah, it's just blackmail. He's just gone. It was like, it's a Band-Aid solution for a storyline way to get rid of a very, very prominent player that we had at that point. True. In the next episode, we see that Tim Smith is very worried about Kane McMillan's disappearance. And he made one attempt. My question is, when somebody disappears, you make signs that say, have you seen this person? Yeah. Or, you know, missing. Why did he use one of signs? Uh, that Tim Smith did not know what the fuck was going on. That is not a scripted part of this at all. Is the the the, the missing posters was a completely improv Tim Smith thing that we just kind of let go. Um, yeah. He used, it, he used it several times. Like yeah, the, Tim, the Smith one, th Tim Smith thinks he's really funny. <laughs> the one episode we did with this, uh, we actually found clips for like four different shows mm. where he kept putting up the one sign. Yeah. And he also kept saying that he was putting the signs around his town. I do not believe that Kane McMillan lived near Tim Smith. He does not. Uh, well, it, at the time, Kane was in Michigan and Tim lives in Ohio, so it's kind of close, but not same state. Also, uh, he also kept bitching about ink. Yeah. No one asked him to use that much ink. I don't know why he was complaining about using ink. You gotta say, it was weird. It was very uh, weird. It was weird, brother. The fact that he did not know where the storyline was going kind of explains a lot. Yeah. After that, uh, we actually get the return of Kane. So the entire Kane disappearing and coming back thing is like was supposed to be the real like thrust of us getting into the storyline. Uh, Kane was like, I'm going to sit out a week. I'm not going to host for a week. I'm not going to do anything for a week. And then I'll come back and be a heel. And I was like, okay. And that was the way we did it. And Kane coming back was supposed to be this sort of moment um, uh, in the storyline where like, we weren't like, sure, the question mark was there because we were like, oh yeah, the match is happening, but who's gonna be in it? And like, that was like the way to get people to click on the video. But yeah, like ob at the, obviously at the end of the day, that team didn't change. It was the same team until they broke up all the way through. But like uh, for storyline and dramatic purposes, that's kind of why they 
we did that. Uh, but, yeah. Again, feels like a weird choice because they come back against the legend team of the Killer Nerd Squad. You know? Yeah. But had they actually played a game before as the Knights of Steel? They had signed up as Knights of Steel. They had played as Knights of Steel in the old league. Again, there's a lot of like reliant information on these people to make the storyline work more. Um, so yeah, I Knights of felt, Steel. I think it's the official debut in Multiplex of the Knights of Steel that turned yes. into the Knights of Hydra. Yes, and then they're Knights of Hydra until the beginning of Season 2, where they're Knights of Steel for their one and only match in Season 2. Uh, but they, so but They never won again. No, they never won again after beating Killer Nerd Squad. Also, why did Tim Smith call them the Agents of Hydra? Uh, Tim Smith has a very hard time um, speaking. Fair. We have witnessed that in other moments. Yep. Okay, so he returns. I imagine he's under the spell, the control yeah. of the hunter. Yeah. This is never made that clear. He just talks like regular Kane, except the I part where he says he's in China or something. I can't remember if we actually filmed... I'm pretty sure we filmed an actual Kane getting changed moment or something. I don't know where it is or what happened to it. Maybe we didn't. Maybe yeah. I made that up in my brain. But like, we, we put it, we put it in one of the videos. Okay. Uh, okay. I, I think it's, I think it's in the Tim Smith video mm -hmm. after the the sign at the end. We have a clip of uh, it's a couple of seconds long that Kane is saying like, Ryan Permison got me and blah blah blah, and then you just hear the code, and you see the glasses drop, like the neon glasses that Kane owned. Mm -hmm. And I guess you get to assume, but I, I don't think there's ever like a coming back from that moment. So there's no actual resolution to any of this story. From from in, in public viewing, there's no actual yeah. resolution. Do not, do not jump ahead of my questions. I'm gonna I'm sorry. get to that. I apologize. So after this moment, basically you have the hunter, you have Kane, and like things are wheels are spinning, wheels are going into motion. Things are gonna happen, and then. A Lobo shows up. Yeah. This weird Facebook exclusive video where he just basically says that things are changing and, and he's going to kick some ass and shit. In teams. He says in teams. But you were his teammate at, that, yeah. at this point, right? Yeah, I was. But you were not part of this alpha thing. No, I was not. I was I was heel uh, and Jim and I had teamed up um, based on me just needing a teammate. Kane suggested it. Um, and that was a, that was a, uh, uh, sort of like a, a continuity issue <laughs> that we ran into while we would run the story. We were like, oh yeah, Jim's in this, but Jim's already a heel and Jim's already your teammate. That's kind of weird. But then that's how we were able to weave like me as part of it. Cause Kane really wanted to have me be a part of this for some reason. Uh, so I, you would never are officially linked into a thing. No, no, I would have been part of the resolution that we'll talk about at the end. Uh, but this was, uh, Jim was part of the Alpha Alliance of people that needed to be the center folk. Like, we tried we tried to connect everyone in Alpha Alliance to this sort of plot line, so Jim was the one that was the hardest to fit into that because he was already a heel. I mean, he doesn't even get a code or anything, he just chooses no. to go. Right, and that's, that's sort of the way they went because it was like, oh, he's a heel, he, he would just choose to do it, and I disagree with that uh but it's one of those things where it's like the the like the um the way we try to work everything in doesn't quite land it doesn't quite work uh and we had to force some of the connections to make them work this was one that was probably the most forced um as for the facebook exclusive part we were trying to weave very clearly when you were searching for all this we scattered these clips to the winds across the channel and on the facebook yes. group to get people it was a lot of work a lot we wanted everyone to see these in different places to make it feel super uh super inclusive to make it feel super connected um immersive. Uh, yeah immersive we wanted this to be like a very immersive thing for the first season across the channel uh so yeah i don't think you meant inclusive because there's no women in this you're right i okay. meant i meant immersive uh but yeah speaking of people who willingly joined if hunter chambliss which, by the way, was a weird, weird pick. He's part of the Alpha Alliance at that time, yeah. But 
but it's supposed to be a super team and you're picking the guy who cannot find a w if he hits him upside the head uh yeah he was willing to join i mean this is on the episode this is on yeah. the clip he says fuck yeah and and and, and ryan says like are you in and it's like i'm in i'm fucking in and he does the fucking shooting with the with the fingers and kissing which is kind of weird but yeah. after he says yes and everything then ryan is like well then dragon cold blah 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 and i'm like ha huh. so the thing What? with that was hunter was just supposed to get the code i think hunter was just supposed to get the code and be done but i think hunter just didn't fucking understand what the shit was going on and just like was like uh yeah i'm fucking in Because if anyone recruits Hunter to do anything, obviously Hunter's gonna go do it. Like that's just Fair. who Hunter is. So I just I think that was just a fucking a mess up uh, between between them, and I don't it's know who actually directed weird. this. Nobody supervised the filming of this segment. Uh, I think someone did. I just don't know if it was me or Kane. I don't know. I feel like if I had been there, I would have caught that and had them stop that. But um, I think Kane might have directed this one. I don't actually know. They could have actually been unsupervised. For all I know, it's so long ago I actually couldn't tell you. It honestly, uh, it feels weird because he's like, "Yeah, I'm in. It's all done." And, and yeah. why, I mean, if you're and even on Ryan's side, like if your your mission is to get there and use the code on this gem of a player, why are you even asking me? Hey, are you okay? You sure. Seem, you seem upset. Sure. I. We want to join. Yeah, I. I think the whole conceit of that scene doesn't quite, quite work. There's dueling methods of trying to get someone in it just doesn't quite work i think it's probably the whole the worst thing in the whole thing i can totally agree with you on that this whole thing sucks but so at this point we have kane we have ryan we have hunter chambers and we have jim yeah. and then jake gets a phone call out of nowhere with the best lighting we have ever seen jake maringoni have which is obviously something he shot by himself yeah he shot that he picks up he picks up the phone and ryan asks him to join his thing he says no and then ryan tells him something that's a secret he says i don't know where you heard that uh, you know and then he hails the hunter i have several questions mm -hmm. one why in the world would ryan permison call him by phone to australia did he not know the fucking costs of international phone calls <laughs> that was like the one thing the one thing we always would do is if we weren't on a stream yard call together the easiest way obviously would just do the phone call thing like me and jim became a team in a cut scene where i called him on the phone like that was the season one band-aid solution of we need to talk to this person but we can't get them on call um And But it that was, makes sense if you are both in the same country. Right. It doesn't make any sense. But hey, at the end of the day, I guess Ryan didn't give a shit about international costs. But... Okay. And second. Who cares? What was the sick? Uh, What again. Was the shot? No What's idea. It? I'll be honest with you. No idea. Uh, I don't... I'll be honest. I don't, I don't think I knew about what exactly jake's part in the story was besides knowing the end game of it um i don't remember i it could have just been you have a secret or something maybe jake even improved it for all i know um Honestly, i think that I, i just assume he murdered somebody <laughs> uh if you want my personal my personal just insight into the scene i think jake uh i think jake absolutely uh sent threatening letters to make G to make a third Charlie's Angels and like was like hiring a hitman to kill McG if he didn't make a third one and like Ryan got a hold of that information. So that'd be that would that'd be my that guess. actually fits. That actually fits. That that would make that'd be my guess. So then to wrap it up, in the title match of the singles fandom title. Yes. Uh, which was the I think that was the end of the that week's events of stuff i think robert parker wins because yeah. i mean it's robert parker and you have case cornelisa who doesn't want to be there at all just sitting there quietly suffering through your storyline yeah where the hulk shows up and then yeah. he does a sudden but inevitable betrayal 
when he joins the hunt. Yeah. Why? So this was the this was our big like shock and awe. This is the thing that like out of left field makes no sense because he's not even in Alpha Alliance. It makes no sense that he would be a part of it. But it's because he's Robert's teammate. It's the only person that we thought would be comparable to Chance in in fandom ability to be able to play Robert as like a suitable finale person. Um, so we, we slotted him in that spot. Um, the reason why Case is there is because behind the scenes, we filmed, this is the only time, one of two times we've ever done this, where we filmed, this is the only time we've done this specific thing, where we filmed both Case versus Robert and the Triple Threat Team's titles on the same night back to back. They were done back to back. So Case is still there because they're, he's about to play a team's match. Like he and Robert are both about to play the team's match. Um, Whereas, and then the only other time we did it after that was Eli and Jeremy was actually back to back on single title match nights uh, in season two. Um, but that's what that's why Casey's there. So you have Arkham Knights breaking up just before you film Arkham Knights title shot. Well, in chronological order of release, it's supposed to go teams title, singles title. But so singles title is supposed to be the last thing we do. What if they were champions at that time? Were you willing to break the champions up just because of this gimmick? So here's this is where the resolution comes into play. Uh, ah. yeah. Last question is, where was this going? And what happened? It just so, died out of nowhere. So what happened was there was supposed to be a fandom event that would come out in December that would end the year, and it would have been a uh, Alpha Alliance sort of civil war. Alpha Alliance sort of Civil War event. There were going to be six matches. It was going to be Robert was going to uh, was going to play three people, and I was going to play three people to try and set things straight. Uh, I was going to play Jim to get my teammate back. I was going to play Ryan in a revenge match because Ryan wanted to play me again, uh, and then I played a, a, a handicap match against Hunter and Russell Howell. Uh, so that they could be involved in the event. Uh, and Robert was... Why Russell Howell? Because uh, he was in the faction with Chance. Oh. He was the only person that was technically in there that was not in there. Uh, and then Robert was supposed to play Kane, Jake, Tim. And if we beat them all, every time you beat someone, they lost the control... Like, Ryan lost control on them, they go back to normal. If they want to be. And it's a, again, this is a dumb idea, very dumb idea. But that was the idea, and the and the, we filmed four of these matches. They were filmed. Uh, we had Robert knocking out Kane. I knocked out Russell and Hunter. Jim beat me. I beat Ryan. Um, and so the other thing we promised. That's why if you ever look at the records, there's an extra win on Jim's record in terms of matches he's played. We made the promise that if you beat any of us you would get a win on your record. But if you lost to us, nothing happens. No worries. It's so that you could participate in the thing and, you know, whatever. Um, which I think was a Kane, a Kane idea. It could have been a me idea too. Uh, but that was the event that was supposed to end it. And at the end of it, everything would go back to normal, basically, for everyone. And so at the start of next season, Arkham Knights would be fine. They'd be right back to where they were. Tim and Robert would stay a team. Cody would still be managing them. Jake would go back to normal. Uh, basically, everyone would go back to normal unless they wanted to stay heels. If you wanted to stay a heel, then yeah, then it was just a, well, this fucked me up. I'm gonna stay fucked up, sort of thing. Uh, like Ryan stays a heel next season. Hunter stays a heel next season. Russell doesn't come back. Jake and everyone obviously are faces, tweeners in season two. Um, but no, we what happened was we weren't able to film Robert versus Jake or Tim versus Robert uh, in time. So we ditched the whole thing. Uh, and we went because we just couldn't get it done. We couldn't get it put together. Well, you were like three 
quarters of the way there. Right. Like I think there was there I think there was either an issue where we couldn't get it edited or we couldn't get it scheduled. We couldn't play it. We couldn't film it. Um, we we couldn't get all of we got all mine done and then we couldn't get all of Robert's done. Um, so we ended up jettisoning the event and then replacing it last minute with Last Stand, which was put together, shot, edited, and put together and out in a week. Um, and that five hour video was the replacement that took the entire league in and we just didn't acknowledge it. We decided to use the Last Stand to like set up next season and be like, forget what you saw, this is what's coming next. And then when we start next season, we just totally were like, that happened, sure. And just don't acknowledge it and moved on. Uh, because I think we all sort of, we all silently kind of like, this sucked and was stupid and a bad idea and we can't finish it. So let's just forget it ever happened and be done with that. Um, I think we were all very much in a position where we're like, we really just want to be done with this as quickly as possible because we were too far into it at this point to go back unless we were like, we couldn't get this done, so bye, never mind. It's easily the worst thing we've done in the history of fandom is that storyline. Um, but Don't you think yeah. it would have helped out, like, do something? Maybe just, you know, sure. just film, film a thing where somebody just fucking grabs Ryan Permison and, like, I don't know, wrestles control of the people from it or something. Sure, it, it, like hindsight 2020, sure. We could have filmed a Band-Aid answer to wrap it all up and be like, ah, get done. But I think, if I remember correctly, I think there's like some reference in the promos for Kings of Winter versus Knights of Steel at the start of season two. There's like some, I think we like do some small verbal acknowledgement that like Ryan got better or something. And it was like a dumb verbal hindsight 2020 band-aid solution. I don't even remember if that's real. I just remember that like, I remember that in, I think at the beginning of that match, we like, well, if it exists... I will put it right here. There you go. There you go. Let's see what our competitors have to say. You've heard enough about Nico. Let's see what these teams are saying back in the locker room. All right, so we are here. We are here to fight just as we are here to fight the bad question writing. And it's not because these questions in today's match is going to be bad. It's because we're fighting the bad question writer, Caleb Coho. It's going to be a fantastic match. Good versus bad. I like I like these guys, even though they're assholes. I like them. So I can't wait to play. I'm, I'm going to let Ryan talk. Me and Ryan are buds now. We don't talk about the match that happened before this. We're just buds. <laughs> yes, indeed, partner. The past is prologue. It doesn't matter. We are here for the here and now. It is 2019. It's a new year. Knights of Steel are back, and we are definitely gunning for those team belts. We want those belts around our waist. That has been our goal from the very beginning, and it's going to continue to be our goal until we get those belts. Mm, you know, uh, it's been a nice break. It's been a nice vacation. Um, I, it's February. Uh, Jim, do we have a match today? Jim, Jim, you there? Oh, oh, <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. I, was, I, I just heard Ryan. I heard Ryan and uh, Kane, Kane guy start talking and I, I just fell asleep. They're so boring. Look, these guys wouldn't know how to be healed if they hit him upside the head. They had to do a complete reboot a la Force Awakens to try and start over fresh. Uh, but here's the thing, you can't reboot the one in one record you have and the one in two record you're about to have after today. And when we're done with you, no one's gonna remember you except for that terrible heel stint you have had last season. Meanwhile, we won heel team of the year, we're gonna win team of the year and we're gonna win belts. So that's just how it's gonna go. Uh, and you say that uh, as kings, we kind of suck. Um, what's better than a king than a god? So we might as well just be the gods of this match. What? God, so the match, the fuck is he talking about? Yeah, that storyline was shit. And like, I think at the start of season two, we were all just kind of glad to go. Like, I think the thing that everyone remembers about season one of fandom is not this storyline. The thing that people remember more is the, the team's tournament, is that uh, that big three-part, three-prong tournament that ended in the triple threat where Silver Shamrock's upset. And I think that's the best natural storyline to ever happen. But I do, remember this, though. I do remember this. Uh, so in the end, basically, just like this 
now eight part series nine part if you found the recap it's just a gigantic waste of time yeah no absolutely a gigantic waste of time it's a weird easter egg of enigmas that just add up to nothing um so yeah we stopped it i think we stopped doing like intensive cutscene reliant storylines going into season two and we just kind of if we were going to do things it was going to be done in post matches and promos and it was going to be built off of character dynamics and then you so if you watched the matches you could understand what's happening while you're watching the match in the match that oh this person doesn't like this person this person's going to do this thing um and then used we utilized the facebook group a lot to like be like here's an announcement that will affect the storyline of the season sort of thing but at this point storylines for us are cody doesn't like me i don't like cody we're going head to head and the other factions are going head to head and it's very much just rivalries and dynamics and that's that, sort of where we're actually, at i think it works well up to a point what i do say do think and mike shares his opinion with me too bad he had to drop out because his internet went to hell mm -hmm. uh but like you have four factions. Yeah. Like nobody's doing anything with them. Like at least the Criterion was around. We like to poke Club Dreads ass all the time. You know? Right. Like, drop some fucking teaser here. Something. Because that's kind of fun. But if Tail the Hunter is the alternative, then let's just do right. nothing. And I will I will say we don't do nothing. And that you're going to want to keep watching season four because we're going to be doing something pretty massive this season. Um, just keep watching. I'm not, that's all I'm going to say is just keep watching. I won't tell you when it happens. I'm not going to tell you where it happens. I'm not going to tell you what's going to happen. Just keep watching season four. There's going to be something big happening. This and week. then at the end, when nothing happened, at least you are doing it again. At, at least I got y'all to fucking watch season four. <laughs> um, exactly. But like at the end of the day, so, uh, something's gonna happen, and it's gonna be pretty big, and you guys are gonna wanna be watching. Uh, but this has been, season four has been a great year, and the natural character dynamics and storylines and rivalries have been really fun. So, good shit. Thanks, Coho, for taking time to do this. Uh, it filled some holes, it left some holes that apparently were never filled. Never filmed. It you ever like wonder what? You ever wonder what? Do you hear? You want my fan theories? Uh, Jake Marangoni, uh, the McG theory. That was the secret. And uh, what was the other one? The blackmail for Chance. Oh yeah. Uh, uh, Chance stole the answers uh, from Robert's house for uh, one of the matches from the old lead. There you go. Uh, sure. There you go. Yeah. Uh, thanks everybody for watching. This is officially the end of season one of. A moment from the old online trivia days. Uh, we're gonna be back. We have a lot of moments. It's just been intensive. I don't know why I decided to make it daily, but I made it daily for 27 episodes. So, good shit. Mike, I hope your internet is fine and eventually you'll come back. See you guys at the video store. I kinda wanna see that final event now. Oh well. Zilla